Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine. I will list all my socials down below. Now today, we are reviewing the new Norvina palette. Super excited to check it out. You guys know, obviously, I have the look on already. So if you want to see how I created this look and what I think of the palette, then just keep watching. Okay, guys, so you know why we are here. We are here to review the new Norvina palette. This is her Unicarton holographic, really cute. Okay, so here they have listed the ingredients and all of the information on the palette, as well as the shades that are not intended for direct eye use. Now, usually with vegan palettes, because they're not using like beetles and stuff like that, that the other palettes that are not vegan uses, this might cause some staining to the eye. So I will list the shades that say you're not really supposed to use directly towards the eye. That's all it means that it's just gonna cause some staining. So I will list those right here. And just FYI, I did review her Norvina Pro Palettes 1, 2, and 3. I will list them. I will have a card listed up here just so you guys can see them if you want to. I'm excited about this one. So yeah, let's open the Unicarton up. And it did come with the little eye primer. I don't use it only because I like thicker primers. I actually like to use concealer to prime my eyes before I apply eyeshadow. The reason for that is because... I have a little bit of discoloration on my lids, so I like to cancel out that color, and the best way to do that is with concealer, especially something thick base like the Tarte Shape Tape, which is my favorite to use. So that's what I have here. You guys can see a little lighter than my complexion. That's all I did was I primed my eyes. And if you see this red, excuse me, I wore my mask outside because even though I'm vaccinated, I still wear my mask. And I don't know if I got a heat rash or something, but all this like red and I don't know, I had some type of reaction. Don't be mindful of that. So on with the review. I don't want to mess it up with my fingerprints, but this is what it looks like. So just like the Unicarton, black with the holographic, very cute galaxy-esque and opening her up of course it comes with a little slip the big mirror which i love and these are the shades gorgeous shade combination i'm gonna pull you guys closer so we can start on a look okay so now that you guys are closer i'm thinking i want to start with this purple shade it's a c5 which is this one here Kickback, just for reference, looks like this. It's very standard. I'm going to use this purple in the inner corner of my eye. And you guys know, if you are not new to my channel, I like to take a little bit at a time. So that's why I'm like constantly dipping in because I like to just take a little at a time and really target where I want that pigmentation. So there is some fallout already, but I don't have any of my foundation products on. So that's good. I can just wipe it out after. Now, this is a really good purple because you know, purples tend to be a little bit either muddy if they're formulated incorrectly or spotty where you'll see like little areas that miss eyeshadow this is like really pigmented and it's gliding on very nicely and very easily you guys can see it's like super pigmented so that's a big plus next i think i want to dip into c4 which is the color next to it that one there and i'm going to take that color directly on top of the previous color, the C5. And I like to take my shades all the way up to my brow bone. And you can see there's quite a bit of fallout. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't bother me, but I know some of you guys, it bothers you guys. So now I'm going back in with C5 using the eyeshadow brush that I used for that color. And I'm just making sure I blend it with the C4 color. So kind of doing like dragging up little tiny motions just to to blend that color in with the previous one. Next, I want to dip into that shade B5, which is this one here. And you guys know I use a different eyeshadow brush per color just because I feel like, especially when you're dealing with super, super colorful eyeshadows like this, you want to use a different one per color just so it prevents from getting money. And when you're using colorful eyeshadows like this, you always want to go back and like kind of refresh the previous color that you put on just so that way they remain pigmented. So it's easier when it has its own brush. What I want to try to do is dip into B2 and B3 and make kind of my own color so these two here so what I do is I dip into this one 
and then lightly tap this one and just go back and forth and it makes kind of my own shade and I'm gonna use that on top of the green that I put here the V5 I kind of want like a more neon looking green almost more yellow toned very Beetlejuice <laughs> but I love it then I'm going back into B5 and again going over that shade while at the same time making sure that I blend it up to fade it out with the green that I just placed and also you want to make sure it fades out well with the purple so you want to make sure everything is super blended and there's no harsh lines screw it let's try this dark green which is the E3 down here in the bottom it's kind of like a cross between dark green and dark blue. I might regret this, but we'll see. I don't want to do like a more cat eye shape. So what I'm doing is kind of like a sideways triangle and making sure I bring in that shade a little more to really smoke out the corner of my eye. And when you do this, you can always clean this up very neatly with a wet wipe or makeup wipe. I really want to get the dark shade in here. And of course, making little flicking motions motions towards the green here just so that way it blends in nicely with it so that's what we have so far now I think to tie in those shades I'm gonna do the same thing I did previously where I dip into these two shades so b3 and b2 and just place that above now i dipped a little bit more into the yellow just so it looks a little bit different so like a little subtle difference then i'm going back in with that e3 that really dark green dark green blue and then with no extra product just using the brush very small flicking motions up just so that way it blends in with that lime green shade i just put in there and sometimes what i like to do is use my finger i like to use either my ring finger or my pinky just because it applies the least amount of pressure and I like to just blend it up with my finger so this is what we have so far what I want to do is clean this up and do the same thing on this eye cut both of their creases and then I'll be right back okay guys so I am back and I know you're looking at me like what just happened it looks totally different so I didn't want to record it because I basically used the same technique the exact same technique that that I used on this eye the only difference is that I wanted to use different colors the reason for that is you guys know when I review eyeshadow palettes in my channel I like to use basically almost all of the colors in the palette or most of them so that's why I wanted to do a different color on this side but for reference I will show you exactly what I use so the beginning portion is the exact same portion here just to give it some cohesion so the purple is the same it, I used the c5 which was this one and then the c4 on top of that and then the middle colors I used d5 for the bottom portion and then for the top I dipped into c3 and c1 and kind of did my own little concoction so my own shade and then for the for the wing portion of my eye I did use E2 which is this one here on top of that I used D4 which is this shade here this peachy looking shade so yeah that's what it looks like and I just winged it out I did use my Tarte Shape Tape now I think I'm next I want to use the shade B4 which is this one here and with a flat brush, just apply it with packing motions. And then when you're going towards the crease, you just want to be very careful that you don't blend that shade in with the purple that you have on top. And then when you hit towards the end of your shade, you want to kind of fade it out with swiping motions only because you want to prepare it for blending with the next color. And if you have hooded eyes like I do, you always want to lean back and kind of look down just so that way your skin on your eyelid stretches and you can get really in those crevices and in those creases. Let's see, I'm almost tempted to dip into this glittery shade, which is the A4. So that one up here. Okay, that's like really, like you can't even hardly see it. Okay, so you kind of, with this shade, you have to like literally dig in there with your brush because it's so packed in there. You have to literally dig, dig, dig with that brush and then you'll see, see how it is. 
And with this, you definitely want to pack it on there because it's glitter. So be very careful. And I'm packing on and doing very small swiping motions. It is a gorgeous color. They just packed it in very tightly. This is ridiculous. This is beautiful. Look at that. Now I'm curious to dip into that darker gl glitter shade, which is the A5. And I'm gonna use that towards the tail end of my lid. Again, grabbing a different brush. Now this has a different consistency. It's more creamier. So let's see. Again, you wanna be very careful when you're using colors like this. So you just want to dab and do very small swiping motions. And of course, you want to make sure you blend it in with that glittery blue that we had put previously. And again, tilt your head back so you can get in your crease. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And my favorite wipes, just for reference, is the Neutrogena wipes. I love these. These are like my tried and trues. Inexpensive. You can actually get them in like Costco or I don't know if Sam's Club has it, but I've seen it in Costco. And they actually have like a big box of these. So now the other side, let's work on the other side maybe i'm going to start off with that shade that b4 the one that i put here since the purple is on this side too so yeah the b4 which was this one here I'm almost leaning towards doing the exact same thing on the other side on this side only because i feel like no other colors would look good with it so yeah let's just do the exact same thing that we did on the other side using the glittery A4 and then going in with the A5 which is that navy kind of glitter. Yeah, so what do you guys think so far? Now what we're going to do is off of camera, I'm going to apply my complexion products because you don't need to see that. This is an eyeshadow review, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have completed my look with my complexion products, I also added some shade by the waterline. So I used A3, which is that shade there. And then in my inner corner, I did use A2, which is that glittery shade there. So I'm gonna give you guys a close up so you guys can see everything. So this is the eye look. So what did I think of the palette overall? Norvina has never disappointed me. Anastasia Beverly Hills in general has never disappointed me. I love their formulation. This is no different. I'm obsessed with the packaging, of course. Beautiful, gorgeous. In terms of the color story, I think it's gorgeous, very unique. You can do many looks with these shades, which is really great. You can also, if you want to go like dark and vampy and not colorful, you can use the bottom half portion of the palette. If you want to go more towards the neon, like Easter colors, you can do the middle portion. These are all very vibrant and beautiful. And if you want to just go for shimmers or glitters, you have your top portions along with a white. Now I'm curious to see the white. So what I'm going to do is I want to swatch it just to see. This is what it looks like. But just to see, I'm so curious. So this is what the white looks like. For the people that are wondering. Pretty decent white if you ask me. So yeah, I'm super obsessed with this palette. I definitely see myself using it more than once, um, especially for spring and summer. It's like the perfect palette. So I do recommend this palette if you're interested in these types of colors. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.